Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the all new One X Player 1S. Now this is an upgrade from their last model, the One X Player. And basically what we have here is an upgraded Intel Tiger Lake CPU. This one coming in with the 1195G7 with the clock speed up to 5 gigahertz. And when it comes to the built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics, these are actually running at 1400 megahertz. So we do have a bit of a clock jump on both of these. As you can see, it's actually a pretty big handheld with built-in controls. We have an 8.4 inch screen. And if you're interested in checking out, you know, just the overall performance of this unit, I did create my initial video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But like I mentioned, this video is strictly dedicated to emulation. We're going to be testing out some PSP, some GameCube, some Wii, some Wii U, some PS2, some PS3, some Switch, 3DS, and even original Xbox emulation on the One X Player 1S. But before we jump right into the testing, I do want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. So like I said, this is powered by the Intel i7-1195G7. Four cores, eight threads, base clock of 2.9 GHz with a max clock up to 5. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics running at 1400 MHz. 16 GB of LPDDR4X RAM running at 4266 MHz. There's a couple different storage variants available. This one just happens to have the 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, but you can also opt for a one terabyte model. We also have a 59 watt hour battery and it's running Windows 10 right out of the box. The One X Player 1S does have a turbo button built in and once you hit that, it's gonna take the TDP up on this Intel Tiger Lake CPU to 28 watts. You can actually adjust this inside of the BIOS. But when the turbo's off, it's at 20 watts. And when it comes to emulation on this device, you can get away with emulating a lot of stuff with turbo completely off. That'll save some battery and heat. But when it comes to the higher end stuff like PS2 and PS3, I would highly recommend turning that turbo button on. You're just going to get a much better experience, especially if you want to run your favorite retro games at a higher resolution. So for this video here, 80% of those games are going to be running from an external drive. You'll see this USB Type-C hub plugged in, but uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And the first one we're going to get into to is PSP. So here it is. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We have Midnight Club Dub Edition, which is a harder one to emulate, running at full speed, 4x resolution, and with a lot of the stuff, you can actually go up a bit higher. But like I mentioned, this is a harder one to run, along with other games like Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, and even Liberation. Liberation is one that I tested, but I did have to take it down a bit with that game. I went down to 3x, still using that Vulcan back in. Overall, PSP emulation on this device works really well. And by the way, for PSP, I didn't have to turn the turbo button on at all. Moving over to something a little higher end, we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, 1440p, everything that I tested ran really well at 1440p, and if you do run into a game that, you know, stutters a little bit at this higher resolution, you can always drop it down to 1080. This device here is basically going to run any GameCube game as long as it's compatible with the Dolphin emulator. Even the harder ones to emulate are going to work really well with that Vulcan back end. I also tested OpenGL and with this one here, Automotalista at 1440p, it was running at about 58, but as soon as I swapped it over to either DX11 or Vulcan, we got full speed. And when it comes to Wii emulation, using the same emulator, we're getting the same performance, even with these higher resolutions. And the final thing we're going to test in this video is some PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, Tekken 6, full speed, 60 FPS. In my initial video, I also tested out Skate 3, which is one of the harder ones to run. And it ran pretty decent, but we did have some dips every once in a while. But when it comes to games like this, which are easier to emulate, you're not going to have any issues. So games like Tekken 6 and even Demon Souls are going to run really well. The cat 
So yeah, I mean, as you saw in this video, this does put out some really good emulation performance. It's definitely really expensive, but with those higher CPU clocks, we can get the job done with those harder to emulate games, especially with PS2, which does take advantage of those higher clocks. If you're interested in learning more about this little unit or checking out some PC game performance, definitely check out the first video I made. I kind of just went over everything that this unit has to offer and we tested some games, but I will have one more video coming up. It's just going to be a compilation of more PC games running because I've had a lot of requests. With emulation, the CPU temps on this device actually looked really good. We didn't reach anywhere as high as we did with PC gaming, but uh, it can definitely handle itself. It's got a pretty beefy cooler built in. I do plan on replacing the thermal paste here, but I did want to get this out of the way because I had a lot of people asking about it. But if you're interested in checking out more, definitely stay tuned to the channel. And if you have any requests of anything at all running on the One X Player 1S, let me know in the comments below. One other thing I'd like to mention is this does support Thunderbolt 4, so we can connect an eGPU to this. I could go with something low end or high end. It's really up to you. Just let me know what you want to see in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.